Something about my sister I was asked to write. I tried racking my brain during the night, but nothing would come to story form. Then in my head, this rhyme was born. It's hard to believe Jean survived 80 years after so much illness, sweat, and tears. On September the 6th, 1931, in the Holder Homestead, Jean's life had begun. She arrived in her parents' bed, a preemie baby. She did survive. It's amazing she is still alive. Yeah. <laughs> Our Jean was born in Smith Falls Town, a pretty place of renown, with the Rita River flowing through and the CPR, which was the town's lifeblood too. Jean grew up in a family of children four. Thank God there were no more. <laughs> <laughs> for things were difficult way back then, for mo and for most families it was hard to fend. Jean was a pretty little girl. She had red hair. You wouldn't believe it now, would you? <laughs> but never a curl. Our mother always cut our hair straight around. We were never allowed to let it grow down. While growing up together, Jean and I did fight almost every morning, noon and night. <laughs> Sisterly love, you'd call it, I guess. But we did love each other, only we wouldn't confess. <laughs> of each other, we must have been fond, for we skated arm in arm on many a pond. We would hide under the table when anyone came by, for both Jean and I were very shy. In December, when the Ottawa citizen did arrive, Jean and I, for the paper, would make a dive. We both wanted Santa's pictures to cut out, for during Christmas time, in those days, we had nothing much with which to play. One day, Jean took me snooping in our parents' bedroom and found our dolls that Santa was to bring. When our mother found out, the whipping we got sure did sting. <laughs> Jean loved going to Spencerville during the summer and milking cousin Ernie and Effie's cows. She always stayed with great Aunt Rose, who enjoyed Jean's company and treated her well. Many a friend Jean had while growing up. Mary Pepper was the one Jean was closest to. The pair of them chummed together all the time, and when Mary died, Jean's heart was broken in two. When Jean started Elgin Public School, she paid attention to the golden rule and always got good marks, you bet, for you see, Jean was her teacher's pet. <laughs> <laughs> While in bed, this is a fact. Jean and I wrote messages on each other's back. Then each message we had to guess. Some were funny, I must confess. Shadow pictures we made on the wall with our hands, which was fun, I do recall. I must admit the ones Jean made were the best, for she had many talents which she did display while growing up in Smiths Falls every day. Cartoons and animal pictures Jean loved to draw, and she was good at wielding the axe and old hacksaw. I have the mark on my arm to this day. Thousands of potato bugs and tomato worms from our block long garden we had to pick. We hated the gooey baby ones, for to our fingers they used to stick. The tomato worms were big and ugly, and we were afraid of the spear on their head, to us the shivers they gave. We had to burn the bugs and worms in an old tin can so they wouldn't return to increase their plan. On the railroad tracks, we loved to walk along and hop the ties while singing a song. When outdoors, we loved to hop, skip, and jump. Inside, we'd sit by the fire and talk to Gunk. In case you don't know who Gunk is, he was our grandpa. When Jean was small and she couldn't say grandpa and she called him Gunk and he got that all his life from neighbor kids, everybody. <laughs> With our precious granny, we'd sing and pray and ride on her foot almost every day. Whenever Gunk got his pay, he gave us a nickel and to McGrath's corner store, we would run to buy some coconut candy and chewing gum. Remember that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> when the rainy day came around, 
Outside we were bound, and barefoot through the puddles we would run. We got soaked, but it sure was a lot of fun. When Jean was a bit older, she decided to go away. She went to the town of Aurora, but did not stay. Are you getting bored yet? No. <laughs> During the winter, long johns we had to wear with brown rib stockings and garters rare. Went to the old outhouse we had to go. It took ages to undress when it was 20 below. <laughs> Jean and I had pet cats that disappeared one day. We were told that they had run away. Later in life, we found out they had been taken down to the Rita River in a potato sack where they were thrown in and drowned. We also had a pet hen, I must tell. Our pet pig was getting big and fat, and by our back door, it always sat. Jean and I wouldn't hear tell of it being killed. Then one day, we were at school. Then, while we were at school one day, a knife into our pig, pet pig was drilled. Our poor little pig met its fate, but the joke was on our parents, for it got too fat and it could not be ate. <laughs> <laughs> At Christmas time, we always got a doll. Other than that, we had no toys at all. But we always had plenty of fun playing with the neighbor kids in the snow and sun. Jean and I were often chased by an old man in our town. One night, our father caught him, and after that, we never saw him around. <laughs> One day, Jean fell off the back doorstep and broke her arm, and she really wept. When I went to visit Jean in Woolworth's store, while talking to her, she passed out and landed on the floor. <laughs> we both worked together in Karen's factory, where the baby clothes were made and shipped from sea to sea. On our way to work on a bitter cold winter's day, we both froze our nose, which was painful, I must say. During the 1940s, we went to Laklashikan Music Camp. Jean sure had fun at night when she sneaked out and around the lake she did scamp. <laughs> All our family played instruments in the old Sally Ann band. Jean played euphonium and her music was just grand. Our, our life was involved in the church while growing up. Many a time we carried on and acted up. Jean loved to cook and was always in the kitchen. While doing the dishes with her, she was a vixen. <laughs> I think that's when Jean and I fought the most. It's a wonder we didn't end up as black as toast. Jean always helped her mother with the chores. She never had time to be a bore. And she was like a little mother to Sister Betty Ann and Larry, our brother. When Jean grew older, she started to date and went all over Smith Falls searching for a mate. <laughs> Boys used to flock to our house all the time, looking for that older sister of mine. <laughs> Betty Ann and I didn't count at all in those days. <laughs> the day came when our family moved away. Jean didn't like the city and did not stay. She returned to our old hometown, and while there, love she found. Jean got married and had a family. After she returned to Smith Falls, each other we seldom did see. Jean always helped others along life's way, and she still does to this day. She would give you the shirt off her back and ask for nothing. That is a fact. When I look back upon our growing up years, we may have fought, but we still had fun in spite of our tears. We faced many obstacles along life's way, but we love and cherish each other to this day. Now, we often sit and reminisce about the good old days when our life was hit and miss. Mm -hmm. Many more things about Jean I could write, but I don't want to keep you here until midnight. <laughs> so I will end this storytelling rhyme and wish a happy birthday, happy 80th birthday to this precious sister of mine. Aww.